410, how does that work out? The tall and short of it. Because we couldn't probably go dancing. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> At 100, you get used to the idea that you're going to die. <laughs> Takes a licking, keeps on ticking. <laughs> Even if you're at the end of it, you still want to enjoy what time you have left. I had my first roommate about four and a half years ago. One of them died, and the other one was here for two and a half years, and then he's been here now a year and a half. You know, this might make a good Murder, She Wrote uh, script, you know? One roommate dies. I wonder if the other one will survive. <laughs> <laughs> Just behave. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> and the chicken livers. And the chicken livers. We and squabble a little bit from okay. time to time, but neither one of us takes it to heart. Get some yams. Well, uh, write it down. Sack of flour. Right? We have a very good relationship. I'm old, you know. I can't remember everything. Oh, don't pull that old stuff on me. <laughs> This is my husband uh, in later life, I would say, uh, in his 70s. My husband has been uh, gone for about uh, 14 years. We bought the house together in 1962. Unfortunately, uh, my son is deceased too. These are paintings of my husband and a painting of me. Most of the art in my house is made by either my husband, my son, and the paintings are by friends. But it's not always a feeling of sadness. It's kind of like they're still with me in a way. And uh, that's another reason why I did not want to leave this house. And it was fine until I was about 94, at which time I had to give up driving. And that, of course, made a big difference in my life. I actually um, went to three nursing homes, and uh, I found that the, the atmosphere was very depressing. A friend told me about the organization. The people involved in this program are usually well and active enough to be self-sufficient. Uh, it's strictly a, a roommate situation. Okay. Affordable Living for the Aging is a nonprofit organization. Home share programs address the needs of low-income seniors who want to remain in their homes, but sometimes feel that there's no option but to move to a nursing home or assisted living. So I introduced Shirley and Scott because I knew that Scott was willing and able to provide the transportation um, services that Shirley needed also willing to provide the companionship that she was looking for, and he also pays um, a bit of rent each month. I just had a feeling they would get along. We complete about 30 matches per year. So we have not received any reports of COVID infections. We have roughly 10 to 12 home providers on our list, but on the flip side of that, we have 65 to 75 housing seekers who are waiting for homes. Um, many people who join our program are looking for companionship. And I think it's especially important in um, the age of Corona. Scott and I do not have the same schedule. Uh, he goes to bed early. He gets up very early. Hello, this is Scott. And uh, I go to bed later and get up later but it doesn't seem to interfere uh, with either of us. Well, Shirley and I kind of have a more than a little bit in common. You know, her husband died 14 years ago. My wife died seven years ago. We both adored our spouses. I would gladly give up all of my tomorrows for one yesterday with Margaret. She was six feet tall and the most feminine woman I had ever met. Margaret died in my arms in the hospital and they had to disconnect everything. The reason that I uh, moved uh, was because there were just too many memories. 1948 was the last big polio epidemic I had non-paralytic polio and could not walk. That disease was 
pretty much wiped out uh, by the vaccine. And I'm hoping that uh, they can do as well with this COVID uh, virus so that we can all be safe again and visit and have friends and hug and kiss again. Amy, I cleaned out a bathroom door and I found these little soaps that I thought the girls might like. This means that we could take a bath with this soap and clean you guys right up, right? Come and see me on my patio. I think I would be very um, unhappy right now if I were in a nursing home uh, because you are close to people and it would be very easy for the virus to pass around. Shirley is a person that when you meet her, you have to smile and kind of an admiration. Having a housemaid is definitely in my long-term plans. And these arrangements work very well for me right now. I'm very content with uh, the way things have worked out with Scott. He is dependable and I feel safe and very comfortable. Bravo. Thank you. Very good. As far as a nursing home, I visited some very nice ones, but I, I realized that I could never fit into that kind of a uh, atmosphere. And uh, also I was fully active, you know, and, uh, and quite social and and again, going to lots of concerts, it uh, didn't fit my lifestyle at all, which I've been lucky enough to pretty much uh, continue with, you know. I would never consider that only because it's just not something that's appealing in any way to me. The pandemic has really drawn into the light that nursing homes is a very negative experience for many older adults and their families. Nursing home residents, like all of us, really like normalcy. There's a, there's a strong desire by all of us to age in place. Nursing homes really got started with the onset of the Medicare program in 1965. Traditional nursing home really looks like a, like a hospital. Seven out of every 100 individuals living in a nursing home has died from COVID. So they have to get up when the facility wants them to get up and eat when the facility wants them to eat. Some individuals are going to need a nursing home. For those individuals, we wanna make those nursing homes as strong as possible in terms of being small home environments, having staff that are valued and well compensated, and also being resident directed. And I think moving away from traditional nursing homes for those that need it uh, will be really important. People sort of go to a nursing home to kind of ease into dying, I guess, or speed it up. Um, so I see no value in that at all. I visited one, um, I don't remember the name, but it was very nice. And uh, the, um, the person that was showing me around, she says, we are having our favorite activity. And she took me into a big room and the people there were playing bingo. That was the big activity. And that didn't sit very well with me. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I had actually made the decision that I would stay in this house.